So you can pet a porcupine, but you got to go the right way. But look at that. Can you see that? That's... Oh, quills. Welcome, friends, to another fun-filled episode of Stockman Originals. And I'm here to answer that age-old burning question, back of everybody's mind. How do you pluck a porcupine? I'm sure you were thinking that, right? Well, I've got a volunteer here. This was a troubled porcupine that met his end the hands of a trapper because he was up to some sort of mischief. So I was giving it and I thought, oh, what a uh, great opportunity to let you guys in on how I extract the quills from this porcupine. Porcupine quill work is a beautiful art form that was done by the natives here on North America. And I'm not sure, but I'd be surprised if it wasn't done everywhere you'd find porcupines. Some examples are, and I have a few. Here's a couple of pieces of applique work that I've done on backs of my hats. This was a hat once upon a time, but the hat wore out. Couldn't throw it away, too much work involved. So I cut it out and saved it for today. <laughs> anyway. It's all porcupine quills, and they're sewn down applique work. This shows uh, on this particular hat, I mean, on any hat, I don't care if the threads show on the inside because generally there's a liner to cover it all up, but there's a way of doing this without letting the, the threads show. So this is applique work, and then there's a use for the guard hairs, and this is called a roach. This is a Native American headdress, this isn't the fanciest one in the world. I made it for myself just to goof around at reenactments and stuff. But these are all the guard hairs from the porcupine. These are the things that stick out above the quills. They make the porcupine look very fancy when he's waddling across the lawn. But they're different from a quill. They're more flexible. They're more like, well, they're kind of in between a quill and a hair. So they, they're called guard hairs because they stick out beyond the rest like most fur has guard hairs. So that's a roach made out of them. And uh, I've made a little device for the side of my hat, my other hat. <laughs> uh, these are the guard hairs again. This is dyed bucktail, and this is a toe bone from a deer. And I just wanted a little, little piece of the roach on my hat without it being this big thing. So that's application or applied embroidery sort of thing. And the guard hairs is also one of my favorite. And I don't have an example, but I'll try. I've got some pictures somewhere I'll dig up. It's birch bark work with quills. And what you do is you take the birch bark, basically, and you just poke a hole through with an awl. It's the only tool you need is an awl to do it. And your quills, of course. And you fold your quills over and stick them through the hole. And uh, you just keep adding and adding and adding until you've got your whole picture. And... Uh, Excuse me. So I'm going to adjust this a bit. And there. Because that's what we want to look at is the porcupine. Poor little booger. Now, on the back end of the porcupine, there's a circle about this big. Maybe a little bigger, but not much. That contains these beautiful, long, white quills. You find porcupines pretty easily on the side of the road. They don't move fast, they can't see good, and they don't show up. They're on a drivers have a really hard time seeing them because of the way their quills and everything lay out. It's very deceiving. But at the very last minute, the porcupine generally when he senses danger will flip around and put his business end, which is his tail and his and, and these long stickers here, towards the enemy. And Oh, when the enemy's a car or a truck or something, they don't do much good, but and they all get crushed and broken, and usually you can't find but maybe three on the whole thing, if you're lucky. But this one here was, like I told you, it was a, it was a troubled situation. They were causing problems, or he was causing problems, and they called in a trapper. Trapper came and did his job and took the little bugger out. So from my perspective... That's a fortunate situation because all these white quills are still there and none of them in my hand yet. 
they go in layers, you know, the longest to the shortest kind of thing. The longest stuff is the guard hairs. So we're gonna start by bucking out the guard hairs and putting them in a little pile. I've got a jar that I've saved here for just such an occasion. And in case somebody wants me to make or I wanna make another roach or something, I save them. So there's all different types of guard hair as well as all different types of quills on a porcupine. These are some neat ones. They come from down on the side of the tail. But they are mostly white. They're a bit thicker than the regular guard hairs and they look an awful lot like whiskers and so I save these in case I do a carving of oh say a raccoon or an otter or somebody that ought to have a face full of whiskers I take and plant these things in his face and voila he's got whiskers that one got away loves it'll be more so anyway I try to save everything that I can off of them I mean even the claws are worth saving. They're, they're almost as big as a bear's claw, for Christ's sakes. So I'm going to start plucking out the guard hairs, which you grab them first because they're the longest things, and you can get them before you get into the sticky, pricky things. Lay them in a little bundle. This guy has been dead for a little while. I prefer it that way when plucking these guys out. If you got a porcupine and wanted to go pluck it the same day, you get a lot more resistance because the skin is tight against, you know, wrapped around the, the root to everything. So if you'll give it a couple days, like three days, on the average, not in direct sun or anything like that, but three days, the skin starts to break down and the follicles loosen and it makes it a little easier. These guys are still coming out a little tough. Hopefully the quills don't give me problem some of these guys got more guard hairs than others and this is a eastern porcupine and the western porcupines their guard hairs okay if these are you know four to six inches long let's see all right, this is pretty average for an Eastern porcupine. Western porcupines, they're like nine inches long. And the dance regalia of the native people, they like to make their roaches out of those Western porkies because they get these long guard hairs and they look very showy, quite pretty. And like mine's that I showed you there is, is pretty plain, but they'll use that uh, dyed bucktail and different things to to flash it up with some color. They're very, very attractive pieces. Too bad the style doesn't come back. See, I got some hair hair in there, and I don't want hair, just the guard hairs. So we separate them Get away. This turns into a time-consuming project. I'm not going to pluck all the guard hairs out all at once for you today. I will, but not on film. But anyway, I got a nice little bundle. I'm going to leave it at that for now so we can move along. The next ones that you go after are those nice long white ones, like I showed you here. Let me make a little pile of them here. I need you to pull out one at a time. Notice I'm not wearing gloves. Uh, gloves get in the way. Can't feel your way in there. And if you're going to get in trouble with the quill, you kind of know it coming on. Porcupines, they, when they put a quill in you, it comes real fast and you don't see it coming. But when you're in control of the situation, you can generally do it safely without gloves. Some people claim that porkies can throw their quills at you and they can't they're so fast with their tail they'll slap you so fast you think they threw them at you but it's not uh they're not that tricky <laughs> been lucky my last two dogs have been very smart well all my dogs have been really smart when it comes to porcupines some dogs get a porcupine quill 
in their nose and they get so mad that they are going to kill that porcupine. And those are the ones that cost you hundreds of dollars at the vet to have the quills extracted. My last dog, she got one quill in her bottom lip once and she never went near another porcupine the rest of her life. That's a sign of a smack dog. And Jessie here, she got, she went out to meet a porcupine one time. She got slapped on the leg and she came back to the house looking like she had fringe pants on and she's never gone near one again. Yeah, I'm a smart dog. Now, sometimes you see these white ones will have that black spot there. That's because the quill got broken and water's gotten in there and it's kind of decaying and not much good for anything. So you discard those break right off these white ones are the ones that you want to do that loom that i meant this is the second take the first take wasn't filming so i've said a whole bunch of stuff and i don't know what i didn't say here loom weaving is another technique for bead i mean for quill work it's like doing bead work on a loom but you're using quills instead the results are a very fine beautiful pattern and you know, whatever you, however long you're making it. Generally use stuff like that for, say, knife sheaths and things. Delaware people had some beautiful examples of that in their artistry. So here, I've got a nice collection of the white ones started. These are also nice ones you can dye and, you know, for the different colors and things like that. And dyeing is a, I'm not, I'm not even going to get into it because there's so many levels of what people do with dye. Some people are very dedicated to traditional, you know, natural dyes, which is awesome because that's how they were done way back when. I met a guy who's doing fantastic quill work and, uh, and he was using all natural dyes. Gorgeous. I learned something that day. Uh, I've heard of periwinkles, but I've never heard of dog winkles, but apparently... There's a little gland in a dog winkle that produces a purple dye. And he had gone to the trouble of collecting up a bunch of them and dyed some very pretty color purple. Very nice. So I tend to use, if I just, if I'm just having fun with it and not worrying about historical accuracy, uh, Kool-Aid makes an awesome dye and comes in a variety of colors. So yeah, you can research dyes on your own figure all that stuff out. I just want to show you the techniques. So she, some of these quills start getting into, you know, they start mingling in with the hair and stuff. But these are kind of cool because they start getting more brown in them. Sometimes the brown will come. This is very light brown on this one. Porky's come in a variety of shades, but you can see maybe how that brown is creeping down the quill almost halfway. Let's see if we can get in some different ones. Up here, they usually get a little bit shorter and a lot more brown. These are the ones that you tend to get in your dog because the dog's going after his head. Smart one, well, smart one will leave him alone. <laughs> but these are short. These are the ones that are a lot of fun to work with for birch bark application because you don't you're only sticking the two ends in and pulling it down tight so you're going to end up cutting off the rest you don't want to take a you know a quill this long and do that with and only end up using that much of it cutting the rest away so you save these little guys use them for that and you can achieve some really nice shading and color tone with that brown and so yeah these come up come off of up around the head area neck area one thing that's kind of interesting is the tail. The underside of the tail has no quills, but it has bristles, like a pig's bristles. And the natives used to skin these things off, just that little strip on the bottom that drags on the ground. And if you wrap that around a stick, you end up with the best hairbrush that money could buy back then. The ancestors used to use the teeth from porcupines and beavers and other rodents of the size. They'd 
attach them into a wooden handle and use them for carving, like chisels, because they're noticing that these guys are quite capable at carving at wood. Porcupines eat bark, like a beaver, among other things. They, they like clover, too, <laughs> and they like pears for some reason. I saw an oak tree one time. It was probably... A tree about that, you know, 10 inch diameter at the, at the base there. And from right where it came out of the ground, the flare of the roots, it had been chewed and peeled. It wasn't all the way up the tree, out each limb to the very tip of each limb. The bark was completely gone. Oak must be probably the most bitter thing, especially red oak. And they had taken that poor tree's skin off completely. Obviously, it died and probably turned into some really nice firewood. So they, they can be destructive. And if they're in, in doing that kind of mischief with your fruit trees, well, that's when they start getting in trouble. These are nice. They're, they're fat quills. Got the brown and the white together. Very similar in appearance and color to eagle feather, you know, with the white. And then it goes up into the beautiful browns. It's only natural that you want to use it for special decorations and things. So there's no, no shortage. I seldom take all the quills off of a cor porcupine. A couple of reasons. It's a long process, but they produce so many quills that it's like, really? What can do with them all? Of course, this is one way of getting them. Another way of getting them is you can buy them. <laughs> There are supply houses that sell porcupine quills. They sell them dyed. I don't know what they use for dye, but don't. running out of things to tell you about them. Fucking them is just basic, basic good fun, huh? Well, I hope that was uh, helpful or interesting. We'll definitely be back with more information on the actual working of the quills and uh, but thanks for watching and don't forget to hit the subscribe button it helps a lot in building our little tribe and uh yeah we'll see you later thanks